saw very clearly that female-led countries have had significantly lower COVID cases and deaths when compared to male-led ones. In fact, the result on deaths are stronger than the results on cases. Now, this tells us that in fact, female-led countries were often hit as hard as male-led ones by the virus, but they did better when it came to uh, deaths. This became a sort of performance indicator. So in our raw data, we see that on average, male-led countries had deaths of 2,000 and female-led countries had deaths in the range of 1,000. Now, this is a huge difference and our estimations confirmed this general trend. We find that female-led countries went into lockdown more quickly and more decisively, and they did this at considerable risk to their economies. Now, by locking down their countries more quickly, female leaders have clearly demonstrated more empathetic attitude towards their citizens. They seem to have clearly chosen to save the lives of their citizens over saving their economies. Female Leaders also seem to have communicated the details of their strategy better and without any of the bravado that we have seen among some of the male leaders. The Prime Minister of Norway, Erna Solberg, spoke directly to children answering their questions, which could be extremely daunting, uh, while the New Zealand's Prime Minister, Jacinda Ardern, was praised for the way in which she communicated several times uh, especially one example stands out in the way in which she checked in with her citizens uh, through Facebook Live on a daily basis. As more data becomes available and once we update our results, certainly there's a possibility that the findings could change. Uh, but even now, if we examine the leaderboard on COVID cases and deaths, um, all the leaders seem to be male-led countries. This issue has for us opened up the overall question of whether gender of national leader matters for other outcomes, for instance, for outcomes on growth, for outcomes on other social indicators. We still find that women are extremely underrepresented when it comes to occupying leadership position. The example of our own study, out of the 194 countries that we looked at, only 19 of them were female-led. To give you another example of the top 100 FTSE companies, just six of them have female CEOs. So there's a glaring gap in female leadership. This type of research, the type that we have done, indicates that there may be certain types of challenges that women are better at confronting. Uh, challenges are not one dimensional and therefore having leaders of a single type decreases an organization's or a country's ability to deal with various kinds of challenges. So such research directly connects us to the idea of the need for diversity in leadership.